Hello, everyone. My name is Rusica Kolova. I come from North Macedonia, and I'm delighted to be presenting at the World Down Syndrome Congress in Dubai, happening online. Today, I will be talking about an initiative which started thanks to the collaborative action of parents, families, uh, other family members, friends, and people with Down syndrome, and it's called Unlockdown. So let me give you a little bit of a background about myself. Uh, as I said, my name is Rosica, but everyone calls me Rosie. Like I said, I come from North Macedonia, but currently I live in Frankfurt in Germany. I have been living here for five years. I have a younger brother who is on the photo here with me. His name is Nikola. He is 30 years old and he lives in Skopje, which is the capital of North Macedonia. I currently work in an international school in Germany as a teaching and learning support coordinator, which means that I work with stu students with additional learning needs, their teachers, and I work on making sure that our curriculum follows principles of universal design for learning. I also run an organization in North Macedonia called Inclusive Solutions Skopje. And in my free time, I love traveling, trying out different cuisines, swimming, and wandering in the woods. The years 2020 and 2021 have been tough for many of us. There have been numerous challenges brought by the COVID-19 pandemic, including greater isolation, loneliness, boredom, not a lot of things to do throughout the day, then obviously fear for one's health and well-being, especially at the beginning of the pandemic when we didn't know much about the virus and also there weren't any vaccines available. Then there were disruptions to employment and education, so lots of insecurity and stress there, but also lack of information, which is clear and accessible to all. And this was particular the case, particularly the case for people with Down syndrome. I have found out about some of these challenges by regularly keeping in touch with some of my friends who have Down syndrome. Now here you can see pictures, actually screenshots of some of our WhatsApp conversations. Um, on the left, there's Ilina. She's a 17 year old high school student who had to be online to study online because the schools were closed. And uh, she found that very difficult and challenging and she was quite sad that she couldn't go to school, see her friends and have fun there. In her own words, she was quite bored at home. The one on the right, the guy smiling, is Oliver, uh, who works as a bartender at a cafe, well, actually a cafe and restaurant. He works in the cafe uh, part of it. And unfortunately, the restaurant was closed during the pandemic because those were such were the regulations in North Macedonia, which means he spent all of the, that, that time at home. And even though he um, found other hobbies, he actually made little pictures and art, like mural art, as you can see behind him, uh, he was quite sad that he couldn't uh, make coffees every day for other people, which is something that he loves to do. I started investigating these issues a little bit more thoroughly through regular conversations with other people with Down syndrome, and also by asking them to share their information about their daily activities. So they did that in various ways. Sometimes we had calls, sometimes they would send me emails, sometimes they would text me messages in different ways. I also tried to talk to their parents and their siblings so they shared their impressions and their concerns. Ultimately, um, after having multiple of these conversations, we decided to come up with some solutions, some potential solutions to these issues. And these included three ideas. One is, one was to zoom from your room 
Another one was to create accessible materials. And a third one was to write on a website. And I will tell you more about each of them now. Zoom from your room is basically, as the title says, an initiative which involved using the video platform Zoom. It happened about once a week and we had, um, we would spend together about an hour and a half, two hours per call, per video call. The aim of these meetings was to encourage communication and tackle loneliness, which was especially present at the beginning of the pandemic. Usual number of people with Down syndrome per call was about seven to eight, depending on the day. And sometimes they would be joined by other family members or friends. The themes varied. Um, actually, every Zoom meeting was a singing or a dancing party, but sometimes special themes were introduced, such as Halloween. And then I would ask everyone to dress up or Valentine's Day. And then we would have some love songs happening. Um, first day of spring, they would showcase something like they would share pictures of, let's say, um, blossoming trees and things like that. We had the 21 day challenge as a theme for um, World Down Syndrome Day when everyone would share what they have done. And then we also had special occasions. So we would celebrate birthdays online, um, certain anniversaries, um, celebrating participants' achievements, for example, in Special Olympics and uh, dance competitions. So various occasions. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about how this was organized. So initially parents, friends, or siblings would, insist, uh, would assist in joining the call. Uh, this was especially important since uh, many of the participants didn't know initially how to use the platform. Um, it involved me collecting wishes like various uh, songs of choice. So the participants would send their musical choices to the moderator, myself, and then I would share them and I would share my screen and my sound. Usually we would play them through YouTube. Also, we would share videos, photos, and specially prepared slideshows, especially for the birthday parties. I would collect photos from the birthday boy or the girl. Sometimes uh, the parents would send me something special and we would prepare surprises. So that was also part. Um, and then everyone knew the rules of the meeting, especially in terms of taking turns and respect that was essential. So there were no arguments, there was no overlapping, shouting, because as you know, it can get chaotic fairly easily. And interestingly, despite more places opening up recently, um, the weekly Zoom parties are still a popular way to connect and have fun. So we maintain them once a week. This is a snapshot of what they look like. So this is at the beginning of uh, one of uh, such meetings. I think some of the participants are not here yet, but yeah, usually we have a gallery view at the beginning. We start by chatting, by sharing what has happened during the day or during the week. And then we move on to sharing the videos. And then everyone does whatever they want to do. Some pick up a guitar and play, some of the participants sing, others dance. Everyone does whatever they like. Okay, now moving on to the next point, I would like to talk a little bit about accessible materials or lack thereof. Some of the initial challenges we found was that there was a lack of easy to understand information about the pandemic and particularly materials and press releases explaining some COVID specific rules were often not accessible. And by that, I mean that they were not um, in easy read format. They were not understandable for people with the learning disabilities. Uh, that meant that there was a need for creation of such materials, ideally together with people with Down syndrome. 
So we decided to try and create some of them. And um, these are three examples of digital posters, which were inspired by original governmental posters that had quite, um, let's say, vague messages with lots of puns and double meanings that may have not been understood. And indeed, they weren't understood by many of uh, the people with Down syndrome in Macedonia. So we decided to create alternative versions with clear points, easy language, and also, as you can see, the pictures were of people with Down syndrome. So one is about washing hands, another one is about wearing a mask. The third one is about the importance of social distance. We also created two video slideshows. Um, the first one was created in April, 2020, and it was about social distancing, what that means, what that entails, the concept of it and why it's important. And the second one was created in December, 2020, and it was about the holiday season, how to make sure that we celebrate responsibly. Now, how we create these accessible materials, I would like to give you um, a few details. So people with Down syndrome are usually included from the outset in the development of the idea, in the design itself, and the execution of the idea. Um, the language is easy to understand and the message is clear. Um, we try to avoid puns, double meanings, etc. Uh, then the videos included text, pictures, and sound, and uh, there is a narrator reading the text, so there is a voiceover, usually it's my voice, so there is an audio message as well. Um, then people with Down syndrome provide the pictures or take them specifically for the materials, so it's very important to have their images there. And then we pilot them ensuring that they will be well accepted and understood before they are widely shared with um, a broader audience online. Usually we share them through um, various social media channels. Okay, now the third initiative that I wanted to talk about, which was all part of this unlockdown umbrella project, was an initiative called Right on the Site. So what we did was we created a website on a free platform. First, we explored three different ones, WordPress, Google Sites, Wix, and we decided on Wix in the end. It was maintained by myself and a high school volunteer, um, a girl from an international high school in Skopje. And it had contributions or content written or created by people with Down syndrome. So what was the content of the website? Um, it had five main pages. So one of the pages contained information about the contributors or the people with the Down syndrome. Um, another page was a blog with updates about their activities and interests. Um, then there was a page with useful materials like the ones I showed you uh, earlier, accessible materials. Uh, then there was a culinary page because one of the things we discussed a lot in uh, the Zoom meets is um, food. So that's why we felt like we needed a culinary page with recipes. And then there was a page with a gallery of challenges for the 21 day challenge for World Down Syndrome Day. And the way everything worked was that the contributors would send their videos, pictures, texts, recipes, and we would post them. And the website itself was launched on the 21st of March, 2021, so on World Down Syndrome Day. Here is a screenshot of one of the pages. This is the culinary page with little stories and recipes. Um, this is also a snapshot of the blog. One of the contributors is talking about his um, exhibition. So this is an exhibition of his digital art. Another one was talking about his accomplishments in Special Olympics and swimming. 
to be more specific. So, yes. Now, I would like to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that inevitably rose um, during online communication. And you may encounter them as well. It's perfectly fine. Um, <laughs> these were common at school. Uh, these have been common in people's workplaces, offices. So inevitably they wouldn't happen here. Um, one of the major things was uh, to ensure that everyone has access to a device and stable internet. We try to have these uh, meetings during weekends when the computers would be free to use and when there could be someone at home to potentially help with connection issues, with joining the calls, etc. Because again, not everyone owns their own computer. Some of them have phones, some of them don't have smartphones. So ideally somebody else would have been at home at that time. So this is something to think about if planning such events. Then another issue was that um, there were variable skills among the participants. So some have experience with online learning, the younger ones who still go to school and were studying online. Some of them, they may have used already Zoom but others had to rely on people living with them. Interestingly though, as soon as everyone got initially exposed to Zoom as a platform, they all started um, using it more confidently and were able to join themselves. Um, now we're more than a year in and no one has issues with joining. Then there was the initial skepticism, mainly among the parents who thought that oh, they won't be able to maintain attention for an hour and a half, let alone two hours. It's gonna to be too much, maybe boring. They may not wanna join. And I'm glad that we managed to prove them wrong. Um, it was indeed very well accepted. And here we are a year and a half later, still doing it. Then in terms of moderation and maintaining smooth communication, of course, there's always the occasional arguments, the occasional overlaps, shouting, but this happens again in every Zoom meeting. And I have to say, I've been quite happy with how um, good we are when it comes to taking turns and respecting each other. And then when it comes to maintaining interest and preventing fatigue, again, um, it's important to come up with new ideas, but make sure that you build on the participants' interests. Uh, this le has less to do with what was posted on the website or um, the materials, the accessible materials, but more to do with uh, the Zoom meetings themselves, so the live meetings in order to prevent uh, fatigue during them. And finally, I would like to share some tips for successful online activities. Um, it's important to ensure that everyone can participate. So arrange this in advance with family members and friends if necessary. Learn about the needs and the interests of the participants and draw on them. They're more likely to send you content for the website if you ask them about something that they like to do. Like for example, if they like to cook or if they like to swim or if they like to draw or if they're interested in fashion, they will constantly send you things which are of their interest and they would want to see those displayed. Then not everyone will participate in the same way, but you can make sure that everyone has the chance to do so. Be flexible, but establish some good ground rules to ensure fair participation. Lead by example, if it's a dance party, everyone has to dance. Find a sweet spot in terms of frequency of online meetups, once a week, twice a week, and then try to combine online and offline activities. Like here, we have an example of Tsako telling us about dancing and actually doing so in the park. He even made a video about that. Thank you very much for your attention and stay connected.